Malaysia, a world-class diving destinations where you can take a deep dive. Let's take a look where Malaysia dive sites are. We have the peninsula, Malaysia, and we also have the Borneo site of Sabah and Sarawak. Okay. Now, let's take a guess. Which island do you think is a world-class diving destination in Malaysia? And your guess will be Sipadan Island. Why Sipadan Island? Let's take a look. Sipadan Island is the only oceanic island in Malaysia. Okay. And it has a drop off of 600 meters, which is 200 feet down to the seabed. If you look at this chart, you see the depth, the depth of the blue colors, the 600 meter right to the seabed. This is where we call it an oceanic island. And this is the uniqueness of Sipadan. You know, Jacques Cousteau, the famous explorer, once said, Sipadan is an untouched piece of art. So you see here, that's the drop off of 600 meters down. Okay, that's why it's world famous. It's an oceanic island. Now, I'm sure just now you will have seen the videos that uh, Tourism Malaysia has screened through and through the diving of Sipadan with schools of jackfish, schools of barracudas, and it's clear visibility, lots of turtles. So I'm not going to mention much because you've seen it in the video just now in Truly Malaysia video. Now, when we want to do promotions on uh, diving, of course, uh, Sipadan has been well known. So we are trying also to uh, move beyond Sipadan. So that's why we would like to introduce some other islands that's uh, equivalent uh, good dive sites in Malaysia, such as Mabu and Kapalai Islands, which is also located in, uh, in the Celebes Sea. They are the sisters of Sipadan because Mabu, Kapalai, Sipadan is like a package together when you go diving. Now the others are Samporna, which is now uh, famous with uh, um, uh, day trips, snorkelings and uh, uh, island hoppings because Tun Sakaran Marine Park of Samporna have eight islands yeah, in this marine park clusters. So some of the famous one would be uh, Selakan. Later I'll show you a video of Selakan. Bohe Dulang, Sibuan and Mantabuan. Bohe Dulang is a uh, marine park research island whereby uh, no activities, only for research. And then of course Layang Layang Island of Kota Kinabalu. Layang Layang is also considered a, a world class top diving site because Annually, Layan Layan attracts thousands of hammerhead sharks. Hammerhead sharks will be um, will be uh, using Layan Layan as their stopover uh, during the months of April and May. So, uh, divers all over the world will come to Layan Layan just to see the schools of hammerhead. Now, the other one would be Labuan. Labuan has um, World War II shipwrecks that is considered a heritage history dive site. So it will be it will be also a, 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 a world class dive site because not many in this region in this area of uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, or Philippines that have World War II shipwrecks. Now. World class, world renowned muck diving. Muck diving is like what it is said. Muck, muck is about uh, sandy bottoms, uh, dirty, you know, but they are rich with marine lives. This is what I'm referring to. This is what you are calling it as muck. You see the comparison of the uh, uh, Pegasus and the finger here. Yeah, the Pegasus and the finger and small tiny creatures which is like two centimeter pygmy seahorse and seahorse as well. So all these animals are 
habitats of the muck sand bottoms. This one looks like Pikachu. It's a new debran, and it's also a uh, habitats of the uh, sand bottom. So, world famous dive sites. We have the uh, muck, the small creatures. We also have the uh, clear visibilities of giant schools. Giant schools of fishes, giant schools of barracuda and jets. Okay, now this is what I said, layang layang. That's another uh, good visibility. And this island is located uh, about a two hours flight from Kota Kinabalu, and this is the only island with one resort and it's an exclusive diving to see the hammerheads schools of them yeah so this will be another top dive sites yeah. the next one will be labuan labuan will be four types of wrecks that is american wreck australian wreck seaman wreck blue water wreck now you compare the size of the shipwreck and the size of the diver here look it's that big and that tiny okay this will be the world war ii shipwrecks that we have in la one and it attracts uh annually uh experts from australia experts from america to come here to pay um respect to the uh, lost life during the world war ii so la one this is a World War II shipwreck. Now, let's have a look on the video on Salakan. Okay, so that is Lumna Salakan, one of the islands of the coast in Samprona, the uh, Tun Sakaran Marine Park clusters. Now back to Peninsula. Peninsula, we have a lot of islands where I'm sure you would have known: Pahantian, Lang Tenga, Redang, Kapa Sango, Tioman, and the islands of uh, Johor. Okay, hang on. Now, this is the uh, islands that is of peninsula. Of course, uh, these are also uh, good diving spots, good diving sites, and uh, mostly would be uh, frequent by our neighbor from the Singapore because it's nearby, it's nearer, and over the weekend, especially to Tioman Island and islands of Pulau, uh, of uh, Johor, such as Pemanggil, Ao, you know, um let me start with the uh, field tango island uh, tango island is located in trangano bidong island is also another new dive site but it is not commercialized because it is a research island by uh, UNC malaysia trangano they use it as a researcher island so uh, no accommodation uh, no activities on the island but they are day trips from the mainland to the island for diving which they don't uh, where they are not allowed to land on the island it's just only for diving yeah and of course the Pantian island Redang island Tioman, and pulau paya on the uh, on the west coast of peninsula yeah now let's look at Pantian island Pantian island has a mixtures of nice beaches easy diving sites you know Pahantian is famous for its free and easy environment. It's a uh, beach 
activities such as bonfire, uh, parties, and it's an island for easy dive for beginners just to hang around, uh, holiday makers rather than avid divers. Yeah, that's Perhentian Island. Well, Redang Island, I'm sure for the Chinese speaking um, uh, attendees that you all are here, I'm sure you would have heard of this movie. Xia Re Mo Mo Cha is a summer holiday Hong Kong famous movie. And from that movie on, Redang has become a, a, a widely known uh, China tourist uh, that, uh, destination spots, be it diving, snorkeling, or just the white sand beaches. Yeah. But Redang, no doubt, has its good diving sites as well. There are uh, uh, mixtures of deep dive as well as easy dive. Yeah. The other islands will be Tango Island. Tango Island is considered in the peninsula of Malaysia as one of the top dive sites because most of its dive sites are deep dives. Uh, with good visibility, can be compared similar to Sipadan because of its deep. Yeah. Each dive site easily 25 meters to 30 meters above. And there's a frequent sightings of the gentle giant whale shark. Uh, this year alone, they are like every month the whale shark can be seen. So good and bad uh, during the MCO, less activities, the marine life come come nearer to the islands and frequents the island more. Okay. Now of course, there are Tioman Islands also, which is the, one of Malaysia's earliest islands to be opened up to tourists. And this island has the most diving operators, the most diving resort because it's being developed the earliest. So more activities, more investments, more investors, because the island has two ferry transports. So Anytime, any day, there's lots of tourists going over there. The, uh, there's more than one jetty area. There's two jetty points now. So, Tioman Island has its own uh, airport strip as well. So, it's one of the most developed. And uh, it also used to be uh, frequented by a lot of Europeans. Europeans love to go there during the uh, monsoon period because there's an air, air strip and it can be accessible even during the monsoon time when sometimes the ferry doesn't move. Yeah. Okay, let me show you another video. This one would be from Tango Island. Thank you. 
Okay, so that one would be Tango Island Diving and it's easily accessible from Kuala Lumpur via uh, bus or via uh, uh, land, you can drive there. Now, in the new norm of this uh, pandemic, um, the Ministry of Tourism together with uh, National Security Council has drawn up new, new standards, new SOPs for us all to follow to adhere to the um, help to adhere to the standards of cleanliness and on the environment on as well as on the use on board use of equipment and uh, our social distancing so all this will be uh, had been uh, given out to uh, dive centers to follow so they are like saringan kesihatan kebersihan tan peralatan menyelam bilangan penumpang dalam bor and then sijil vaksinasi and i think this is the new norm now wherever we go wherever we check in we have to have two doses completed two doses of vaccine and of course the uh, social distancing penjarakan physical pemakaian pelitup muka wearing mask at all times you know so this is the new norm for everyone of us to travel uh, during peak at peak time it was like 40 60 80 100 so now we are in fasa keempat which means um on the diving side the boats uh the dive boats are allowed to go on 100 percent uh, during the fasa ketiga is like 80 percent of the full capacity for example if a boat can accommodate the 10, 10 divers so it will become like eight, eight divers so now it's back to fasa keempat which means it's full capacity so it's uh, 100 percent is 10 divers so these are the things that we keep um, the association keep working with um Matang, with KBS, and then um, in return, this ministry will will uh, engage with MKN. What would be the best, you know, for us to to adhere to contribute to the um, to the safety of divers, a safety of the workers as well. Yeah, so it's important for us to keep our uh help our staff and our guests when we go enjoy the nature. Now, let's talk about the tourist arrival. Yeah? In 2019, from the uh, statistics of tori uh, Tourism Malaysia, before the pandemic, it's 26 million. Now, it's just 4.3 million of tourist arrival. So, with this drop, of tourist arrival, I I strongly would like to uh, ask every one of you, please go holiday with confidence, go and support the local, go into the islands, give them a chance to do some business, give them a chance to come back stronger, to help Malaysia economy by spending more in Malaysia. Stop thinking about, for this moment, at least one year, stop thinking about going overseas holidays, stop thinking about buying overseas. Please, let's Chuti Malaysia, let's support the local, go and buy the batiks when you visit Trangganu, go and help the local uh, business, Chuti Chuti in Malaysia, Chuti Chuti local domestic travel because if we as Malaysians who do not want to spend money buying Malaysian product, who else will do? Who else will do? Yeah. Now, okay. Besides that, uh, I would like to do a little bit of uh, info. Next week, we are going to have our uh, dive exhibition coming up physically. Now, of course, some of you will say now is not a good time to go out, you know, in a in an air conditioned building, in an air conditioned environment for a few hours, you know, to shop around, to move around. Look, we have to start living in a new norm. If you, 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 we are mostly from the tourism industry. If you don't go out, tourism will be dead. If you don't go out and support the locals, it will be dead. Forever we will be stuck there. 
we won't be moving. Yeah, so please, if you have the time next week, come to World Trade Center, meet up with us. There's an also a Tetare session we're gonna have with Kate Joan Honey from the Tourism Malaysia Department. He is also working very, very hard to promote scuba diving industry in Malaysia to travel domestic, to spice up the economy, to kickstart everything, to kickstart our, our Malaysia economy. Because tourism is the third highest income yield for Malaysia. Yeah. Tourism is a very high income yield for Malaysia. And scuba diving is niche market, but with a very high profit yield. Okay, after that, I would like to, to mention that if you travel, please leave only footprints because when we are dealing with um, islands underwater, we need to know that we have to remember the sustainability of the environment, survivability of the marine life and ourselves. We have to self-regulate sustainability we want to sustain the beauty of our nature so that we leave them alone merely as a passerby do not collect or take a piece of the coral back as collection keep it there let the coral grow so that your children when they go back to the island they can see these corals you know survivability of the marine life please do not interfere in their lifestyle such as fish feeding or turtle feeding when you go snorkeling. Let them live on to be, to see your children too. Because if you fish the fish, what do you fish the fish? You feed the fish with roti, gardenia roti, massimo roti, or whatever, banana, bananas that you, leftover bananas that you don't eat. But please, are this food, the nature food of these fishes or Turtles? No. These fishes and turtles don't don't eat these rotis and bananas. They eat corals. They eat the seaweeds. They eat the planktons. In in return, if I feed you with corals or I feed you with seaweeds or I feed you with plankton, how would your stomach react? Try to imagine that. Yeah. You will have stomach ache, you will have food poisoning. It will go the same to the fish and the turtles as well. Yeah, Do not eat them. It, of course, the next thing is like I said, self. As a diver tourist, we must always self-regulate. Yeah, Shouldn't refrain, We should refrain from polluting or destroying. No rubbish to the sea, no stepping on corals. Leave it as it is. Yeah? Please whenever if not even only diving i'm i'm always a person who wants to be in in harmony with nature we go trekking we go uh mountain climbing leave no rubbishes only footprints it goes the same do not throw rubbish do not pluck trees do not step on any animals or anything yeah we must live in harmony with nature because the underwater world is also another world for marine lives, another world for us to appreciate. Okay, here I would like to share with you another uh, video that's about conservation. This will be the last video I have. Enjoy.
Okay, with that, I end the video. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm open to any questions from you guys. Okay, uh, thank you, Miss Jenny, for your sharing. Um, I believe everyone who is watching now will have a, lo a lot of doubts about scuba diving in Malaysia. So we'll go ahead and take some time for the questions. But I've seen a few already. So one of the question is, can people who can't swim go diving? Oh, this is a good question and a very common question. Um, now, I, for me personally, I would say yes and no. Why I say yes? Because when you go diving, when you're in underwater, you do not need to be a very good swimmer to swim. You just basically like you are in outer space. You know, outer space is like when you're in like inner space, you are motionless. So you are in inner space. Inner space is also the same motionless. But why I say no? The problem will arise when you are up in the surface, when you come up from your underwater, when you go on the boat. Not all days are flat sea. Some days there are waves. So if your boat is like 20 meters away from you and your boatman cannot come too near, so you would need to swim to your boat. How if you don't know how to swim? So you need to know how to swim at least to be in water confidence to be water confidence and not empty when they are high wave so that's why i said yes and no the best is to equip yourself with some swimming skills not to say a very good swimmer just to know some swimming skill and be water confidence yep. I see, I see. okay so okay. another question another question uh, will there be restriction on the number of people traveling to an island? Under this new pandemic, um, actually there's no restriction because the island is big. And uh, now we are all in uh, phase four, FASA 4. So in FASA 4, uh, it means 100% capacity. But of course, if let's say, uh, for example, in Toman Island, that's, I think more than 50 resorts over there so if one resort 50 uh one resort can accommodate maybe 20 to 30 so you can imagine there's no restriction actually so the last weekend if i'm not mistaken even ferries are fully booked so yeah there's no restriction mm. okay okay um the next question is what precautions do scuba divers need to take um precautions like i would say uh during this new pandemic of course everyone have to be self-regulate you need to know always to follow the sop keep yourself or even your your group of friends during your conversation in news time dinner time in the restaurants or in the table you know we have to always have to have that precaution you know the pandemic is not over now talking about diving as a whole diving is a very self-disciplined sport because when you attend the courses uh, your instructor will teach you about your body that's physic or physio and physics so we we have rules whereby uh, we don't go certain that if you are an open water diver you cannot go deeper than 18 meters when you are not an experienced or advanced diver you cannot go for night dive if you are not trained to be a wreck diver you cannot dive the wreck meaning you cannot penetrate so it's a very disciplined sports and and scuba diving uh emphasize on body you must go as a body system because if one person having problem with the regulator or the equipment, you have another body as a support, a backup. If you are low on air, your body will share air. So it's a very self dis um, self disciplined spot. So that's always an a a a, a learners 
you must be uh, always on your toe even though you're going diving it's a it's a nice sports it's a fun sports but the level of uh, discipline must be there you know it's not like oh you go diving you forgot about this you forgot about breathing no you still keep breathing so when you over breathe and your air is low you need to always monitor okay how many airs i have and how deep i'm going so it's a self-discipline sports So one more question is, what preparations needed to be made in advance compared to pre-pandemic? Oh, um, like I said, of course, now the current uh, pandemic situation, we, okay, let's talk about ourselves. Self, of course. You must have two dose of uh, vaccine before you start traveling because it's responsibility to yourself, responsibility to your body, responsibility to the group of divers that you're traveling with. And also, the other thing is I would suggest to divers or to anyone which is um, planning to join the this activity, this sport, try to have your own equipment because if you go for rental uh, you're sharing equipment you know your mouthpiece your suit your gear so try to have your own equipment because you wouldn't know how the equipment is being sanitized whether it's sanitized but if it's your own equipment it's yours you take care of it you make sure that you sanitize your own equipment and you use your mouthpiece. It's all about your yourself caring for your own equipment. So that's what I would I would advise now after pre pandemic for those divers who have not had their own equipment, try to invest in your own equipment before you go. If you don't want to invest in your own equipment, invest in a good mouthpiece where you go there you can change the mouthpiece or you invest in a wet suit because by wearing the wet suit you wouldn't know who would be doing their business when you are underwater <laughs> you know you pee underwater you wouldn't know whether the suit will be sanitized so try to invest in your own equipment after this pandemic you know yeah that would be my suggestions to them so and there's another question about how many levels of diving licenses ah okay now let's start uh, there are introduction to scuba where we call it as try scuba it's just by in the pool or in a confined area where you try if you like the idea of breathing through your mouth in the confined area with waters that will be the introductory level now to get the, the other one will be the open water the common one will be open water diver open water diver course that's the first level i would say that's the first level to go into the spots of scuba diving now once you are open water level there is many many other specialties for you to learn before you go into at once now you have this um open water then you have many many types of specialties that's deep at once right naturalist photography underwater uh, underwater photography many but to go for the level after open water will be at once at once rescue before you go into rescue meaning you can rescue your body, you can rescue any divers that is in distress or there's any diver that has problem. But before you be you you attend the rescue diver, you have to go for emergency first aid response. You need to know how to do CPR, first aid and uh, AED. Automated uh, electronic defilerator because these are uh, emergency um, uh, techniques that you need to learn. Of course, uh, CPR is, is also a compulsory because you need to revive the diver if the diver is not breathing. 
yeah so rescue then you go to the dive master dive master is considered as underwater tour guide dive masters brings you uh, underwater like for example i want to go to a dive site in sipadan you cannot go there and dive alone normally you would not allow yeah the operators will have a dive master go with you dive with you and show you the way because you don't dive the dive site every day the dive master do so the dive master know the dive site inside out but you don't so it's just like where you go into a tourist destination you go to buy a toke or you go to uh, any of the uh, tourist area you need a guide to guide you to tell you the history of the place the dive master will do that the dive master will show you okay this dive site have frog fish la, or fossilia or what type of uh, uh, natural habitats of fishes and types of corals the dive master will show you yeah that's dive master so after dive master will be the instructor level so instructor is the person who teach diving from open water at once to rescue to dive master so the instructor will teach you the diving and of course from instructor that will be the course director level the instructor who teach instructor that's the course director level so that will be a lifetime journey for this person this course director that is the passion that is his life or her life you know to teach scuba diving yeah so that will be the levels of diving licenses yeah okay okay so there's a comment this is yep. the right time to travel <laughs> we miss some Brunner island oh yeah that's why i say in some corner there are lots of nice islands now like uh timba timba bohedula there are a lot yes of course everyone means some corner <laughs> well you can go in now saba okay so i guess we have covered all our questions okay yep uh, so miss jenny is there anything else you would like to say before we conclude uh, the session? like i said just now uh we have to really chitty chitty with confidence if as tourism players you your colleague and um, the attendees here please yeah try to go as much as possible support them by the local because tourism has been the hardest hit during this pandemic if we ourselves the tourism player doesn't uh, help to boost the tourism sector who else will help to boost us yeah we have to help the industry so that all of us can survive and create a better future for tourism industry in malaysia thank you aaron thank you thank you to teach your team Malaysia with confidence yeah that's all thank you okay again so thank you for your time and your content as well as your sharing miss jenny